travel trailer behind a little uh, 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 folded tent trailer behind, set it in the yard of Brother Demers, and that's where we moved into when we joined First Baptist Church in Milford, Ohio. And God put us in, in the ministry there at that place. The thing is, I've heard of me among many with the same commitment out of faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. And God, uh, if, if God could have spoke, I, I prayed, and I, I told the Lord in Texas, I said, now, Lord, if you want me to move to Ohio, Dr. King wanted me to come, and I was going to teach in a Bible school, a uh, Bible training that they had going for bearing gracious seed. So I was coming over there to teach, and I told the Lord before I went, I said, now, Lord, unless you have talked to me verbally, I'm not going. And uh, they don't pray that way unless you want the Lord. We really things come alive in your life. So I prayed that. And if, if God could have spoke audibly, he spoke to me with that verse of Scripture. Put it in my heart indelibly. I moved to Mexico with the same verse now, 34 years ago, uh, 33 years ago, Milford, Ohio. Now I'm going to Mexico on that same verse. Anyway, so we moved over there. There wasn't any school going, and there wasn't any training going, I should say. And there was, I think, six men that some of them moved in, some of them were members of the church, had surrendered to help do the Bearing Precious Seed Ministry, publish the Bible. Nobody knew what they was doing, including Dr. Keene. Dr. Keene, he felt like we needed to train printers. I would learned in Texas that you don't start a ministry with the church member, you start with a preacher. Every ministry is, called, is led by a God called preacher. And so I knew that I came with that principle. Pastor Keene had the other idea that we were going to train printers. Well, uh, the printers, we, we trained one printer in a school up there. The rest of the men were preachers and missionaries and pastors. Anyway, we, we started a school, moved in, moved over there, and we were sitting in the back of the church after Dr. Keene and myself and, and three other guys. I don't remember who all they were. Sam Collins, one of them. Anyway, we were in the back in, in a car. We drove to the church. I just joined the church, and we drove in the parking lot, and Dr. Keene said, we were talking, and Dr. Keene said, Brother Collins, he said, you don't understand. This is the hardest work first. This is like dumping a, a, a load of gravel on top of me and covering me up. He said, you don't understand, Brother Collins. He said, he said we don't have a school going. I thought a school was going. I was just going to come help teach these men. He said, we don't have a school. Unless you start the school and head it up, we're not going to have any, any teaching going on or nothing. And so I said, Dr. Keene, I said, I said, I can't do that. But by the grace of God, I will. And so... I, Lord used me and, and, and thank God for it. It's, it's, it, it. This morning I'm just reporting on what the Lord can do in your life and I'm just praising God for it. Anyway, we started school. We graduated, to put over 100 men in the ministry. Uh, other men uh, uh, went through and didn't complete the school, but we graduated 120 or 120, 125 there at the church. But we started in, so on, uh, on Monday, Tuesday night. With the classes going, I think it was two hours, maybe four hours, whatever it was at that time. But anyway, we had Monday and Tuesday night classes from 76 to 1977. Then we opened up a full three-year program in 1973, 1977. In 1977, we opened up the full program to be done in three years, a four-year program to be done in three years, a four-year Bible college to be done in three years. The way you do that is you have 25% of your, of your credits and your assignments given on external assignments. One of them for illustration was this. On the weekend, when it came up, I was heading to school. I was called vice president. I was called administrator. I was, called, I was the president part of the time. Anyway, through those years. Anyway, the assignment was this to every teacher came. And I said, now this is this way it is. You teach this week. But on Friday evening, everything is done. There's no assignments given for next week. There's no tests given. Because on Friday evening, Saturday and Sunday, everybody's going to be involved in church ministries. And I want their heart, total time, mind, and all there. And then on Monday morning, it come in and it's fresh. Now you start in classroom. And that works to put men in the ministry. To be, put people in ministry when the, when the fact is that you become involved in it while you're learning, and that's the way you, get, that's the way you grew as a Christian. You know, you know what you did when you got saved? If you didn't get involved going to every church service, and if you're here this morning and, you're, and, you, and you don't come on every service here, you need, that's, the, that's your next step of involvement. That's the next step of surrender. You can't surrender to anything beyond being a part of the being here when the when the when the meeting meet, when the people meet, amen. And so you just and you get involved and you start growing. And I just say that this morning. You know that's an automatic thing. God does it. The Lord works in our heart. He that hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Philippians one six. Let me say it again. I'm excited about that verse. You ought to memorize it. Can anybody memorize that with me? Philippians one six says. He that hath the good, good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. That's what happened in my life. He started working. He had the work started. He's working. Only, a, only he needs as a, as a, as a clean, uh, a surrendered vessel. And so this morning, this is what happened. And so 
then we graduated the class. This is a chapel service, and uh, these are classes. This is, we went all the way with diplomas and the whole thing, uh, class rings and everything for the, the, the school. And these are, this is one of the graduating classes. That's, of course, myself. And then next to me is, on the right end, is, uh, Car is uh, Colin Christensen. And on the left end is Dr. George Prenzing. These are instructors. Dr. Prenzing is heaven today. Uh, Colin is a missionary in uh, Hungary. But he, he uh, served with me and is at, at, uh, back there to what happened. I went backwards. Here, here we are. Okay. In 1987, my, gr my son, Jerry, graduated from School of Scripture. So did my son-in-law, Jeff Demers. Jerry graduated in 1981. Jeff graduated in 1980. Jeff and Robin are, 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 are missionaries in Africa. Jerry and Marty, my son and, uh, and daughter-in-law, uh, uh, is in Mexico. They went to a city called Guerrero, Chihuahua, Mexico. And uh, after he came out of language school, and this was 1987, he started this church here in Guerrero, Chihuahua, Mexico. Started this uh, work in that town. There's no, no Bible believing, no soul winning. The Bible, uh, matter of fact, the city didn't even have the Bible in their hands. We went door to door giving out scriptures with mission trips. We spent uh, June, July, and August for about 25 years on mission trips in Mexico and uh, taking church groups. I've taken over 100, uh, probably 150 groups into Mexico. We visited every, this is in the city of Guerrero, Chihuahua, Mexico. Every city, town, and village within a 50 mile radius of that building right there, we went door to door with groups and with the church on mission trips, handing out a copy of the Word of God in every town, 50 mile radius of that, in those 15 years that he was there, and, and gave out a copy of the scriptures and then had evangelistic meeting. People got saved. I've seen, told a preacher last night, I've seen over 40,000 Mexicans bow their head and pray, ask Christ in their heart. I, I could tell you stories this morning that was all the rest of the service about those uh, uh, things that took place in those years. Anyway, uh, out of that uh, uh, church, uh, the church came into being. The man there on the front seat's a pastor, and I don't know his name right now, can't pronounce it. But anyway, uh, this is a congregation. Jerry was there 15 years while he was there, a pastor someplace in the States, and the question was asked. I was with my son when he was uh, 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 presenting the work in that church. And he'd have to, a room for a question and answer. Somebody asked him, said, uh, when are you going to turn that church over to a national? And in my, Jerry, my son Jerry uh, said, he said, uh, when they've learned how to plant churches. And I thought, where did he get that? He didn't get that from me in Bible college. But he, stayed, he decided he, the will of God was to help them to be able to cross over for a church to go before he turned over to national leadership. That national was learning with him how to start a church. This is the first church. They have a building in Saboya, Mexico. This is 50 miles out of radius of that, of that radius there. This is 50 miles from the church. That's Jerry's truck. That's somebody else's car there. But anyway, that tent there is now an auditorium. That church is along this highway out there, and it serves thir uh, 10 villages. There's a little village just along the highway, and, they, and that church is ministering to those. There are three other churches there. When he left, and they, they didn't have buildings. After he left, another one's come into being. So there have been five churches planted there. In 2003, after turning over to national leadership in, in 2002, he moved to, uh, to uh, Los Mochis, Mexico, which is where we're moving in, Janu uh, in January of 2011, into December next year. Uh, Los Mochis is a, a seaport city. Right there it is where that uh, spot is on my map. And that's uh, about... about uh, uh, 800 miles south of uh, Arizona in Mexico. It's a seaport city. Uh, that would be, uh, if things was on as planned, that, that city is going to come on the, uh, on a world uh, uh, information because China right now is putting in a big seaport. Instead of bringing their goods in the United States through California, it's so expensive and so much traffic there that they are bringing there. They're going to bring uh, their, their ships into that place. There's going to be a, a four-lane highway and a, two, a, a, a train track going from Los Mochis all the way across the United States through Denton, Texas, through Fort Worth, Texas, all the way to, to uh, uh, Canada, and it's International Falls, Canada, and that, that highway is under construction right now, and there'll be stuff coming right in. That seaport's going to be coming into the United States and bringing in all of the Chinese goods that, we, that you and I have to buy. I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you something. You're looking at a man this morning as a... a I love America. Uh, I, I want to buy. I, I'm driving a Ford car, and I wouldn't. I, I wouldn't drive anything that was more foreign, foreign made. I just. I, I, you have to pray for me this morning, but I'm just telling you what. I love America, and and and, and I think we ought to stop 
uh, uh, giving them their giving them their money. I think we ought to do that.